What's up guys? Uh, got all the stuff set up to make another video. We're gonna go over uh, slugs, uh, in specific varmint knockers, the 34 grain hollow points and uh, 25 cal. We're gonna shoot them out of the FX in, uh, Wildcat with the power plenum that was recently installed. I also got the Huma transfer port in there. Uh, this is the 700 millimeter superior liner and uh, we're gonna shoot some shots over the chronograph and clock our speed, our starting speed, and then we're gonna see where they group at that speed and if necessary, maybe work on a little bit of fine tuning and see what kind of groups we can get out to 50 yards and uh, out to uh, 96 yards. Uh, I'm you know, pretty close to 100 yards. That's just as far as I can shoot here in the yard. Um, I got a lot of background noise here all the time. I'm always trying to limit, I'm always dealing with either the wind or I get chickens or I got dogs barking or there's crows flying over. Recently we had uh, some red-tailed hawks hatch some little hatchlings and they start screaming every now and then. So there's always noise. Uh, so I apologize for that, but there's not much I can do about it. You know, it's either kind of come out on a nice day when the weather's good and all the animals kind of make noise and I just try to do the best I can. Um, I do got a, a focusing mic, a shotgun mic to try to pick up just my sound, but it's just so noisy out here sometimes that that's kind of the, the situation. But um, uh, we'll save the chit chat for towards the end of the video. We'll get the chronograph set up, shoot some shots over it. I'm going to do the first 50 yard tests from a little bit different location right here. Uh, stay in the shade and uh, shoot my steel targets and uh, we'll put some groups out as soon as we get our speeds from the chronograph. So let's get started. Okay, let's check our velocities with our chronograph. We got it set up right here in front of the gun. I've got uh, three of the Mark II heavies followed by three of the Varmint knockers, 34 grains. And let's see what our speed is at. Okay, so not bad. Let's go with the, the varmint knockers next. Okay, that last one was definitely an off reading. The sun is shining on the back sensor and not the front. So uh, let's go with the first two. These pellet, the pellet and the slug weigh the same. They are the Mark III, I'm sorry, the Mark II Heavy is a 33.95 grain, basically a 34 grain, and the slug is also a 34 grain. So it doesn't surprise me, you know, that they're that close. I figured there'd be a little bit of discrepancy just because the pellet, uh, the design of it, you know, it has the hollow cut base and the pellet, the slugs are flat base. But uh, we're gonna call it 970 for both of them, and uh, we'll go ahead and start our accuracy testing. Okay, got the camera down range, uh, got, our, got our speeds. Um, I Hopefully I'm on target. Uh, I haven't sighted in the rifle yet, but um, it should be on paper when I was shooting yesterday uh, through the chronograph. I was kind of paying attention to where I was hitting. I was aiming at my backstop and um, it looks like I'm in the ballpark. So uh, we'll take two five shot groups uh, if I'm on target and uh, we'll see where they lie and uh, we'll kind of go from there. We'll, we'll, I want to see what this thing is doing. Um, here we go, let's get started.
All right, so that's 10. Looks pretty good through the scope cam. I'm sorry, through the scope. Uh, looks like they're all kind of touching. Um, some of these, these varmint knockers are very soft. And uh, if you're not careful with them, you can dent them. You can easily take your thumbnail and put a dent in the top of it or the side of it. So kind of got to be careful with handling them. Um, you know, for 50 yards, I'm able to hold it pretty steady. But uh, let's walk down there and let's see how they are. Some of the outliers could just be, you know, slight deformation in the slug itself. But uh, they look like they're shooting pretty good for this speed. So uh, let's walk down there and check it out. I got my shooting buddies running around everywhere over here. Okay, so this is my aim point, and this is my aim point. So it's actually pretty close to being sighted in. We've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, and then this one was the first shot, almost like a cold bore shot, we can say. We got one, two, three, four, all the rest of them right there stacked. There's my finger for comparison. Could easily cover it up. So these things are shooting pretty good. Kind of what I had hoped for. Um, I've always had good luck with these varmint knockers. Uh, I had one person request to see what the Mark, uh, the Mark II heavies, the JSB Mark II heavy pellets were doing. And um, in my experience, they're 34 grains, you know, 33.95, I think. They shoot pretty similar to these varmint knockers. So uh, we might be on target. I'm gonna go back and get it set up, uh, swap out the clip, and uh, I'm gonna shoot two groups over here on this target. Okay, guys, almost halfway through loading the clip and I figured I'd I might as well show you know, that I am loading up these pellets. Sometimes, I guess uh, people would like to see that I am shooting what I say I'm shooting. These are the Mark II heavies, 33.95 grains. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten. All right, so I got 10 of these loaded up. Let's see what it'll do. All right, that last group looked pretty stacked. So uh, let's go give it, walk down there and uh, check it out. We can take my tape measure this time. A lot of times when I'm walking with the camera to the target, it's so you guys can see in one cut that I'm shooting the distance that, I'm, that I say I'm shooting at. Um, when I was doing some of the long range videos, I noticed uh, one of the persons said that they were telling their buddy that I was shooting 200 yards and uh, they just didn't believe it because I didn't have no rangefinder footage. But uh, this is 50 yards, 
50.9 yards to these targets. Okay, that's a nice group. That is five shots right there. Less smaller than my thumbnail. Let's see here. That's barely over, sorry. That's barely over a quarter inch, center to center. And uh, this one's not too bad either. We had one little outlier right here. I believe that was the first shot. One stuck there. But you saw it on the camera footage, the target cam, that they all stacked in there real good. Um, might as well measure these while we're here. So, minus that outlier, we're just about a half inch, less than half inch. Take away our flyer right here. So that's pretty good, that's acceptable. You know, if you're aiming at a quarter, you're gonna hit a quarter at 50 yards. So uh, let's get everything swapped out to 100, uh, 96 yards and um, we'll see what we can do. Let's see what these both of these are doing. We'll do another group with each of them. Okay, get the target moved out. Uh, we're gonna shoot, we're actually at 95 yards. Right now I moved, scooted a little bit forward to get into the shade. And uh, we're gonna shoot the JSB Mark II heavies, the redesign. Got 10 of them loaded up. Uh, I tried to get the targets adjusted for, for uh, I noticed when I was setting my GoPro, I had a little bit of glare on it. So I'm not sure, at this point, I'm not quite sure how that's gonna turn out, but hopefully I can get that uh, looking good for you guys so you can see our impacts. But um, also I wanted to point out, when I've been shooting lately, I throw cardboard or just something slippery underneath the legs of my bipod. Um, if you're not consistent with everything and uh, like, you know, I mean, going from shooting on a bench, a wood bench to shooting on the dirt to shooting on something slick, it'll change your point of impact and you'll be chasing, you know, scratching your head trying to figure out what's changing. But um, I noticed with having a little bit of something slippery underneath the bipod legs, it stays a little more consistent. So just something I've learned in uh, my trying to get this thing to group. So I got 10 loaded up, I believe. Uh, the wind's blowing a little bit, it's not too bad. I think I'm just gonna shoot um, all 10 at one target and uh, I'll point out the aim point uh, when I switch to the GoPro cam. But let's get started and uh, see what we can do. Oh, and I forgot, we gotta adjust our distance. So I'm gonna give it five minutes of angle and see where that puts us. Hopefully we're on target. But we're just shooting for groups. Okay, there was 10. The last two look like they're a little bit low. Let me see what the reg pressure is. We 
We're still good on rake pressure. Well, on our fill pressure. Let's see if I can get that to focus. There we are. Rag is set for 150. And all this shooting plus the chronograph has been on one fill. And there's our rag pressure. Hammer setting. All right, let's fast forward and uh, go check out the target. Okay, so here's our target. There's my end point. So that's 10 shots. We've got one, two, three, four, and then the rest are right in here. So not bad. Um, actually, I'll have to look at the target. I think this just might've chipped off. I think our group is here. The wind picked up a little bit, but not bad. So from our outside there, let me see here, we'll go this way. So that's three quarters of an inch from that top one to the three quarter on the bottom. We have, looks like maybe two right there and one outside that. So that's not bad, that's a pretty good group. Um, if I actually looked at the pellets before I shot, that could have an influence. You know, the wind could blow them a little bit, but um, they're not bad. So that's 10 shots right there. This other target, we'll swap over our ammo and uh, we'll be aiming there at that black dot and we'll go for 10 shots with the varmint knockers. Okay, I had some mess ups on this last shot string. I shot 10 shots and accidentally moved my power wheel from seven down to zero. And I didn't realize it till I went back in to fill the air rifle. Okay, I had all kinds of mess ups that last time. Um, for one, I didn't plug in my external mic on that last shot string. Uh, I didn't realize that when I was shouldering the rifle, I bumped my hammer wheel and that put it all the way to power setting zero. And then I went inside and filled the gun and forgot to turn off my GoPro. So my battery, I'm sorry, my memory card filled up. So uh, in order to continue the video, I had to delete the on shot, the shot footage, but um, you'll see with the footage now that uh, that's what the group would look like <laughs> with the uh, power setting zero. Um, I'm surprised it even hit the target. I was wondering why it was shooting so low, but um, I got it filled back up. I'm gonna do two burner shots just to kind of settle the reg. And uh, I'm gonna use the same aim point. Um, it should be hitting higher now than what I was hitting in this group that you guys are looking at now on there. And uh, we'll see if it does any better. I've got um, 10 barman knockers loaded up and a uh, fresh fill. Let's see if that gets us on target and gives us a good group. The wind did pick up a bit, but we'll see how good these do in the wind.
All right, there's our tent. Let's go down there and check it out. Okay, so here's a group I was telling you that I shot on zero power. And here's the last group. Um, I shot out my aim point, so I kind of blurred that out a bit, but I've got the majority of the shots right in here. Let's see if I can get some form of measurement here for the main group. You can say, an inch for this main chunk here. We got one, two, three outside of it. So that's not too bad. Um, you can hear the wind is picked up. Now I'm not saying that that influenced the group too bad. They were grouping pretty good and um, having shot out my aim point, I kind of might have blurred up that group a little bit. But they're grouping pretty good. Um, there was the Mark II's. They shot pretty good, a little bit tighter, more consistent. So um, that's that, you know, uh, that's what it's doing right now. Um, what I think I'll do is probably, well, we'll go back to the bench and talk about that. So I'm gonna start rambling right here, looking at the target. We'll go back to the bench and uh, finish everything up. Okay, we got everything wrapped up for the day. Uh, got the shooting done, got some chronographing done. Um, I think it turned out pretty good. I was very impressed with how the JSB Mark II heavies shot, you know. I just kind of tuned it out, just kind of cranked stuff up as far as power and shot to see where I was at. And it actually shot the JSBs really well. So, um, you know, 970 feet per second, that's cooking, you know. That's probably, I have to punch in the numbers. I'll actually, before I try to guess and slaughter it, I'll just post the number right here on the bottom. But um, that's good power, you know, uh, as far as penetration, you're going to have plenty. Now, the slug being the same weight, you're going to have the same foot pounds, but you're definitely going to get a better energy transfer with the slug. So um, just uh, if you want to copy that tune, the tune that I have here, you know, if you guys get the same parts, um, I will work on a tuning video. I've had a couple of requests for that. And um, just so I can tell you how I got here with this, if you take off your power wheel, there's a little steel BB that could fall out and get lost. Believe me, I know from experience, I was with tweezers trying to pick it out of the, in between my tile floor and the cabinet. So uh, don't lose that thing when you take it apart. When you take off this wheel, take that BB, set it to the side. There's a little, there's a little cup that you'll see the back of with the, with the uh, screw sticking out of it. Pull that thing out and that's your spring seat um, that goes around your hammer spring. Take that screw, get an Allen wrench and back it out of the cup until you look inside the cup and it's flush. So it's, there's no screw sticking inside that cup. That'll be max power. When you put it back together, when you go to cock the rifle, it's not gonna cock. It, even though you have it cranked so far, it's too far. So what you do from there, set it to your adjustment hole, get your Allen, uh, Allen wrench, stick it in there, and do a turn at a time clockwise to go back in. And do a turn, cock your rifle back. And every time you do, when you, when you do the turn, put your setting back to seven. Cock your rifle. Make sure you see if it cocks. It probably won't when you have it set like that. It'll bind up because it's it's too far in. So uh, keep on adjusting. Go in a, in a turn. Cock your rifle. See if it cocks. Don't ever adjust the wheel while you have the rifle cocked. You gotta pull the trigger and let the let the, the hammer down slowly. You know, let the whole arm slowly back down. So you you don't ever want to move this wheel while it's cocked. It'll end up scraping this all up. So uh, keep on doing that process. Keep on screwing that thing in until the rifle cocks. You'll hear it click and you'll hear it catch. If it's not, you'll just pull it back and it'll go right forward. It won't, won't, won't cock the hammer back. That's how you get to your max hammer strength. And um, for the pressure, I've already tuned before on this rifle. And I know that um, you know, 150 bar is uh, pretty, pretty good with that hammer setting. So that's how I went about it here. My reg pressure is right at 150. Um, if you want to copy that tune and then, it, you know, keep on messing with your hammer spring until you get about 970 feet per second. And, uh, it shot those great, you know, it shot them out to, it'll shoot them out to hundred yards really well, I'm sure of it. And who knows, you might even be able to fine tune it from there if you get them a little bit slower. I'm not sure yet, but that'll be for future videos. I will put out a tuning video for pellets, but, um, I'll go over how to go from a low speed to high speed and keeping everything in harmony. Um, I will be doing that, for, but for the time being, I kind of want to tweak this a little bit and see if I can get the um, the varmint knockers to group a little bit better because I'm pretty sure I can get them to group a little bit better than what we did today. 
Uh, I can probably match what the those Mark IIs are doing, the pellets. So if you like what you saw, I've got plenty of videos coming up. Um, you know, I got lots of testing to do on a test the JSB knockouts. I want to still work on a tune for the hybrids. Uh, I'll work on a tune for the Hades. And um, I'll try, it's probably going to end up being a video for each. Sometimes I get carried away with all the information that I want to relate to you guys. Because as I'm going through these processes, I learn stuff that works for me as far as like how often to clean the barrel, you know, how, like the, the type of, sometimes the gun likes to be held kind of firmly. Sometimes it likes to be held softly. You know, I notice a difference in all those things and shooting and shooting and shooting, you kind of learn which ones are the, you know, which one works and which ones doesn't. And um, every time you go out and shoot, pay attention to what you're doing. You know, if you're out shooting and you think the gun's inconsistent, it could be yourself that's inconsistent or it could be the ammo, you know, but uh, is, if, you're, if you're shouldering the rifle and you're stiff arming it in, you're pulling it into your shoulder and it shoots good, shoot like that. Make sure you shoot like that, the, you know, the same. Sometimes when I hold the rifle off the bench, I'm pushing in with this hand. Sometimes I'll pull in with this hand. Sometimes I'll hold loose. And if you're trying to shoot for groups and you're, you got a, you know, a good group, you can always try experimenting with those things and see if your group tightens up. Because a lot of times when you get to a certain point, you know, like say an inch at 100 yards, in order to get tighter than that, you got to check what kind of ammo you're shooting, make sure there's no dents, make sure the wind's not blowing. And little things like I'm saying, there are little nuances about shooting will make a difference in your groups. So I think what I'll try and end up doing is just putting a, put out a video, you know, where I'm just kind of talking about some stuff that I've learned from experience. I'll probably call it, uh, you know, speaking from experience. I think I'll probably end up doing something like that. But um, I got lots of videos to do, lots of slug testing, lots of pellet testing, tuning for this gun, uh, barrel swaps. I'm going to be doing caliber swaps for this. I'm just waiting for the pellet pros to become available. Um, I, I've already got the barrels in 22, 20, uh, this 25, and in 30. So uh, I'll be doing all that stuff. I'll be checking slugs. I'll be checking pellets. You know, and if there's stuff that you guys want to see in the future, leave the you know leave your comment down below. And uh, I like to take the I like making the videos. So any good suggestions? Chances are, if you're asking the question, I probably want to know the question too, or answer that question too. So uh, you know, leave me some comments. See what you guys want to see in uh, future videos. Other than what I've said, I'll do a review on my uh, my air tank whenever I get the valve set up for that. And um, I'm looking forward to be putting out some more videos. Sometimes the wet, sometimes the weather's bad. Like last week, it rained nonstop. And then when it's like that, I can't really do nothing for videos, especially for shooting. But um, I try to make videos as often as I can because I do enjoy shooting. I like to shoot as often as I can daily. You know, most of the times it's daily, as long as even if I come to my little porch here and shoot from here. But um, stay tuned for some more videos. And uh, I look forward to hearing what you guys have to say. Thanks for watching.